You're listening to the Abounding Faith for Today podcast. Inspiration for you as you walk by abounding faith, hope, and love and live your God-given dreams. Is it possible to have peace in the middle of the storm? It's a challenge, but it is possible. And so that's what I'm going to share, that even during this pandemic or even during trials and tribulations, it is possible to have peace. And so if you're feeling discouraged today, if you're feeling low on hope, if your faith has been dwindling, I want to encourage you. The Lord has sent me here via Zoom to encourage you and to remind you that we have hope and we have peace. We have joy because of Jesus. We have so much more. So I wanted to start off with Galatians 5, 22, 26. It's the fruit of the Spirit. So I'll read it out. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace forbearance or patience depending on what version of the bible you're reading i'm reading from the niv kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such things there is no law those who belong to christ jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires since we live by the spirit let us keep in step with the spirit let us not become conceited provoking and envying each other So I just wanted to kind of use that to to remind us that once we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, He comes to live inside of us, and it's His Holy Spirit who fills us with not our peace, but His peace. And that's so important. So we're going to be just focusing on that during this time, just remembering that no matter what's going on around us, we can have peace because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. That's in Isaiah 9, 6. That's one of his names. He's, he's the wonderful counselor. He's a mighty God, but he's also the Prince of Peace. That's who's living inside of you. Amen. So if we find ourselves running out of peace, we just always need to tap into Jesus's peace because he is the Prince of Peace. And we can also stay in peace because we, as we keep our minds set on God's word and reading the Bible, that also keeps us at peace. So I'd like to read for you an entry from my latest book. It's book five, Feisty Faith, Trusting God, Day by Day. It's a 365-day devotional that came out last October. The entry that I'm going to be reading, it's actually from January 5, but it doesn't matter because you can read it at any time. And the title is Perfect Peace. And it's based on one of the verses, one of my favorite verses in the Bible about peace. It's found in Isaiah 26.3 if you want to jot that down or if you want to look it up, but it's a wonderful verse to just meditate on and chew on. Uh, Isaiah 26, 3, and again from the NIV, New International Version. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. I'm going to read that again because there's so much in there. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. So this is what the entry says. So this is my word to you today. So no matter what bad news you may receive or what difficulty you may face, you can find perfect peace in Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Jesus can give you peace that passes understanding. He is not alarmed by any report you've gotten or any giants opposing you. Jesus will not desert you. Trust what he has told you in the light even when your situation looks dark. May you keep your mind fixed on his word, declare his word, memorize and meditate on his word, and stand on his word. May Jesus' peace wash over you and flood you with his love and kindness and grace. May you keep your mind firmly fixed on Jesus, your savior and healer. There's no pit too deep or mess too ugly that he cannot rescue you from and restore you. Be at peace. Jesus, the conquering King, is with you. Amen. He is with you. He knows you each by name. He assembled you here this morning, and he wants to speak to you. So again, if there's any like distracting thoughts or anything, we just come against it in the name of Jesus, because he wants to speak to, to his daughters. And so that verse, again, found in Isaiah 26, 3, when it says that God will keep you, so it says you will Keep in perfect peace. So God will keep you. And in the Hebrew, I looked up in Strong's Concordance, that word keep or you will keep means to watch or guard. So God is watching over you and guarding you. So it says, and who is he guarding? 
And, and what is he doing? He says, you will keep in perfect peace. I just learned that perfect peace basically means peace, peace. Because it's the word shalom. That you've heard, you've heard people say shalom. It's peace. And what does that mean? It means to be safe, to be well, to be happy, friendly, welfare, health, prosperity. So it's saying that you will have perfect peace or you will have like perfect shalom. So shalom, shalom. You're safe, well, happy. And who is it who the promise is for? Or why? It says because you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, so strong and, and steady because they trust in you. And that word trust is to be confident or sure. So when you think about this verse, what stands out is that we keep and gain our peace as we trust and put our confidence in God and believe he is watching over and guarding us. So in other words, the more we trust in God, the more we can be at peace. It sounds so simple, right? Like, oh, okay, yeah, I know God is with me. I know God is guarding me. But in the storms, sometimes we forget. And it's so important where our mind, our thoughts are focused on. Are we trusting God? And God is a sure thing. He's guarding us. So God's job is to guard and watch over us. Our job is to keep our minds fixed on him, our hearts fixed towards him, our, our thoughts, our, our heart, our minds. So we're going to be letting the Holy Spirit search our hearts during this time and during your day, during your week. It's so important to reflect on what it is that you're thinking about. And we're, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But this is the same verse, but from the Message Bible. I don't know if you're familiar with the Message Bible, but it's a different translation, but it's basically in even more common plain language and plain English. So just the same section. It says, people with their minds set on you, so people with their minds set on God, you keep completely whole, steady on their feet, because they keep at it and don't quit. Depend on God and keep at it, because in the Lord God, you have a sure thing. And now how many times do we, you know, run and look to other people and we see that the world changes and jobs change, people in our lives come and go, finances change, like everything is always changing. But God is the same. He never changes. Amen. Can I get an amen for that? <laughs> God never changes. And I don't even, I, would, I don't want to minimize anything that you're going through. I just want to encourage you and remind you that God is the same. As the Bible says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Again, other people may have changed, people that we've depended on, or even when you watch the news and things are constantly changing, but God is a sure thing. And so here it says that he keeps us steady on our feet. And because we don't quit, we depend on God and keep at it. So again, some of you who may be discouraged and thinking about quitting or giving up, I want to encourage you to keep at it because in the Lord God, you have a sure thing. So it's so important that we trust God no matter what all the noise and the chaos is going on around. We trust God above everything else. And I want to share a few more verses from John 14, 27. And again, these are great verses to have and to meditate on and to chew on, to read on your own, or if you want to look them up, John 14, 27. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples, but this is Jesus speaking to you. And he's saying, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. He already knew that we were going to be going through different trials and tribulations. And he's already saying, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. So not peace that comes from the world, but peace that comes in the storm. I've heard it described how peace is not when everything is perfect and you're on a sandy beach and you're relaxing and everything. No, no, no. Peace is, I remember one of my, my dear senior pastor, my late senior pastor, he used to always say that he saw a picture of a bird singing while there was a thunderstorm going on around it. And he's like, that's peace. When you can still rejoice, when you can still worship, even when... The, there's the fire and the flood and the, the tornado going on. 
So again, I don't want to minimize what you've gone through or what you may be going through, but I want to remind you to look up and to remember that God is still God. He's still in control. He's still faithful. He hasn't forgotten you. And you can still have that peace because Jesus is saying, it's my peace that I give you. So from Psalm 29, 11, and this is King David writing, and he's saying, the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. So again, that's something to meditate on as well, that the Lord gives you strength and he gives you peace. And so that's why it's like, and sometimes when even you're like, I don't know why I'm so calm. I don't know why I'm not freaking out. It's that peace. Or even when you find yourself starting to freak out, then you have to just remember who it is you serve and who it is who lives inside of you. And again, I'm preaching to myself as well. We all go through times of wondering, okay, uh, Lord, what's going on here? But his peace is, it passes understanding. So I want to read to you from Philippians 4, verses 4 to 7, if you want to look that up as well. But this is the Apostle Paul speaking, and he's writing from a jail cell. And this is what he's saying. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. And this verse is very popular. I think it was the most searched verse for many years in a row from, I think, the Version Bible app. But it's a Philippians 4. This is starting at verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving... Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. That's a verse that you want to like have highlighted, circled, memorized, put it on an index card or a sticky note in the mirror or something. If you don't already stand up, that's one of those verses. That's one of those key verses. And I want to just point out, so it says, do not be anxious about anything. So right there, go ahead and think to yourself, like, what are some things that are are keeping you up at night or not allowing you to sleep? Like, it's saying, do not be anxious about anything. But how? Like, why? What are we supposed to do? But in every situation, including your situation that you're going through right now or have been through or maybe will face, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, So that means that we're supposed to be praying. We're supposed to be asking God, but we're also supposed to be thanking him. Not so much for what we're going through, but thanking him that we can come to him and that he loves us and that he's going to see us through. But with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And I love that because that means, and I just want to point out, that means, you know, there's a time and place for leaning on people, but it means like it's not griping to others or venting on social media. Like when you're going through a storm, your first line of defense should be to present that to God. And he already knows. (laughs) But you can say, God, I'm facing this. Like, help. That's a prayer. It doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out prayer. It can just be, Jesus, help. That's an effective prayer, and God answers that prayer. So with thanksgiving, but it's even like, thank you, Jesus, that you are going to help me through this storm. But present your request to God because he's the one that can help us. Like, yes, like I said, there's a time and place for trusting in your godly leaders like Chaplain Vivian or others, but also in one another or your pastor or your leader or a trusted friend. But your first stop, your first line of defense, your first call should be to God. Amen. So be presented to him. And then what happens? It says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, so we don't understand how, it's a mystery, but it's wonderful and we receive it by faith, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And really, when we're going through a storm, that's what happens. Like our our thoughts start racing and our heart maybe feels broken or stressed or something. So isn't it lovely to know that it's that peace of God that holds us together? Let that like really just sink in for a moment. Let's think on that for a moment. That when everything is breaking loose, and even if you think about this past year and how we are still standing, we're still standing strong. How in the world did we make it? How did we get through? Only by the grace of God. 
only by his peace and his grace and his love sustaining us. So this is truth. This is the real deal. So again, I don't want to minimize what you're going through, but I want to encourage you and remind you to look up to your heavenly father. And somebody needs to hear this because as I was getting ready for this message, I was also, I wanted to remind you that he's got this. Whatever that this is for you, he's got this and he's got you. So if anyone has been struggling with God, where are you? If he feels far from you, if you feel like you're being ignored or forsaken, I want to remind you that God's got this and he's got you. You've been listening to the Abounding Faith for Today podcast. For more encouragement on your faith journey, visit AboundingFaith.com and follow Abounding Faith on social media.